There are many options out there that are better choices than a flashy Gucci belt. She said, I what? Today I'm reacting to Courtney Ryan's video, 10 things that men wear that women hate. Now, first up, let's look at the thumbnail. What I like about this is it's really simple, really clear. Obviously, you got black text on a white background, it says exactly what it is, and she's got a little bit of a disgusted look on her face. She's a beautiful woman, so this right here is a great combination for a high click-through rate, which is why this has gotten hundreds of thousands of views. Let's hit the play button. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about things men wear that women hate. So first up, solid intro. I haven't watched a whole lot of her videos, so she assumes I'm brand new. She introduces herself and she's really got a good camera presence. I can see she's got a nice background. She is in focus. She looks beautiful. This is a great combination for keeping guys watching. Maybe you're new to the game and you don't know where to start. You don't know what looks good on you and what doesn't. Um, I really just want to be a source that's going to be helpful. I want to be that close girlfriend that you text before you go on a big date and you don't know what to wear. Now that's a really great point that she makes. So many guys, honestly, they want a woman's opinion. They're going to watch my channel and they're going to say, that's nice, but I don't want to hear from some 40 year old dad. I want to hear from an attractive woman, kind of the woman I'm wanting to attract. So in this case, Courtney is nailing her target avatar. I will not judge you for wearing any of these things. If something on this list makes you so happy when you wear it, then please continue to wear it and rock it. If you don't care what women think or what anyone thinks for that matter, keep doing your thing. And she does a great job reassuring guys that, hey, if this makes you happy, if this makes you comfortable, if you can rock it with confidence, then continue to wear it. I like that. Number one on my list is wearing socks with sandals. So not only do I think this looks a little bit silly, but I think it defeats the whole purpose of wearing the sandal in general. So this first point is solid. And I don't think it's only women that hate this on guys. I think a lot of guys, like we just wonder why in the world are you wearing the socks with sandals? I think men wear sandals to maybe give their feet a little breath of fresh air in the warmer climates, but when you're pairing it with a sock, it totally defeats that purpose. Also, if you're finding yourself in a situation when it's maybe too cold out to just wear the sandal on its own, so you're picking the sock to go with it, I think maybe you just shouldn't wear that sandal in the first place and maybe opt for um, a sneaker or just a closed-toed shoe in general. I agree with her that when you wear sandals, it's about giving your feet a little bit of fresh air and you should wear them in a climate, in an environment in which it's hot. And as Courtney pointed out, if the temperature drops, this doesn't mean to continue wearing the sandals with socks. It means you probably need to change up your footwear. Number two, we have flip flops with jeans. So I think this was very cool in the 90s. You know, you're wearing your flip flops with your jeans and you've got frosted tips. Maybe you're in a boy band and you're super cool. But these I like things, that picture of um, Justin Timberlake. Flip flops with jeans is not the coolest thing. So like I mentioned before, I think flip-flops are okay in certain scenarios, those being when you're at the pool, maybe when you're at the beach, um, if you live in a more tropical climate. I don't know about this one, Courtney. I'm not gonna agree with you. Definitely, it wouldn't be in my top 10. I think that this is a look that a lot of guys can pull off, especially if you like jeans, you're wearing them in hot weather, you've got a nice pair of flip-flops, you take care of your feet. And to be fair, I did grow up in the 90s. I remember the 90s well. I remember pulling this look off. So maybe it's just something that's hard for me to give up. But yeah, I would give this one a pass. I also think wearing flip-flops with jeans gives a very odd silhouette. Um, it can actually make your legs look a lot shorter than they are. So you have the jean and then it just cuts off at the flip-flop and you don't have any kind of leverage with the shoe that you're wearing. So it just makes your legs appear a lot shorter than they actually are. Now she makes a solid point about the silhouette. So if you're under five foot six, in general, shorter guys have shorter legs. It may be something you want to be careful with, but if you're six foot two and you just like the look and you're going for something really casual, I really don't see an issue. Next is overly accessorizing. So I think as a man, accessorizing is totally okay. I think wearing jewelry is okay if that shows your personal style and your flair a little bit, but I do think this can be overdone. I know a lot of guys will wear a ring on every finger and a watch and a stack of bracelets up their wrist and a necklace. And honestly, it's just too much. I think less is more. 
I've said that many times, and this is one of the cases where I think it's most important. All right, so I have to agree with this one. It can look bad if you over accessorize, and I knew she was going to bring up a picture of Johnny Depp. Of course, he's probably the far example of the guy that really pushes the envelope there. But when it comes down to it, there is a fine line between accessorizing and over accessorizing. It's also important to understand what's acceptable in your culture because you can be in one country, in one area, one part of the world where it's perfectly fine to have multiple rings, multiple necklaces, another part of the world much more conservative where even two to three rings, one necklace is going to seem like a bit over the top. Now, I know some of you guys out there love your accessories and if that's you, let me hear from you down in the comments. Talk about how you manage to over accessorize, how you're able to pull that look off. I would love to hear from you. Next, we have flashy branded logos. So when I think of this, I instantly think of that big Gucci belt with the Gucci logo on the front or Gucci sandals or a t-shirt with the brand name big across the front. You reach a certain age when it's not really um, stylish anymore. It doesn't look as good. So I know a lot of people buy designer to maybe show that they have some kind of money um, and that they can afford it. But I think when you wear too many flashy logos and you have the brand on everything, it just screams that you're doing that on purpose. And I think it defeats the purpose of you buying the designer piece in general. Flashy logos, I completely agree. But I live in a pretty conservative area within a conservative country. I know I've got a lot of friends that are Russians, Ukrainians, and for them, it is its face. It's simply, hey, you want to be able to show, you know, what's that joke that, you know, the, the Russian guy walks in and asks his buddy, hey, I see you got a new Mercedes, you know, how much did you pay for it? And he says, oh, 100,000. And his friend slaps him and says, you could have paid 200,000 up the road. Okay, so have a little bit of fun there. But the point is, in certain parts of the world, you want to show everybody that you've got the means. My thoughts on this is unless a company's paying you um, to spoil their logo and to sport it, you know, keep it small, keep it subdued, and better yet, you know, find clothing without logos on it. You can buy something designer without it being tacky. I think there are many options out there that are better choices than a flashy Gucci belt. I think a regular belt would always look better than a Gucci belt, for example. I agree with her on the Gucci belt. I just think it's over the top. But if you do, let's say you're into Gucci, I think that bit loafers, that right there is classic. It doesn't scream Gucci. I mean, it does if you understand that they pioneered that style. That was one of their go-tos and they're incredibly comfortable. I think I've got a pair that uh, Aaron Marino forced me to buy. Wait, oh, this all of a sudden, dollar? Oh, it was a, a gift from our Menfluential conference. It was the one extravagance that were like, okay, we had a little bit of money left in the bank. Let's get something to remember this by. Now, really quick, an item you're not going to see on the list today, quality grooming products. We're talking about face scrubs using natural and organic ingredients such as bamboo to exfoliate your skin or a body moisturizer that's going to have your skin looking amazing. Or what about a natural deodorant that keeps you smelling fresh all day and doesn't contain aluminum, which clogs up your pores? Now, today's video, gents, is brought to you by Vitamin, and as one of the owners, I can tell you without any bias, we make the best damn grooming products on the planet. Seriously though, gents, Vitamin has been around for over 20 years, perfecting their craft in some of the top spas in the world. What I love about this company, why I became an owner, is they've got products specifically for your needs. So if you're over the age of 30 and your hair is starting to thin, we've got a volumizing shampoo. Or if you've got, let's say, oily hair, we've got a shampoo that is made specifically to get rid of the oil. Or let's say you've got really dry hair, we've got a moisturizing shampoo specifically for your dry scalp. If you're looking for a styling product that uses natural and organic ingredients and you want low hold, you want high hold, you want high shine, you want low shine, we've got you covered. And if you're dealing with nicks and cuts on your shave, it starts with using a better shaving cream. And then after the fact, if you've got that razor burn, make sure that you're using an aftershave balm, one that has aloe vera, anti-aging serums to deal with wrinkles. And if you've got bags under the eyes, check out our iZone product. I stand behind every product we sell with a 100% money back guarantee. Gents, to get the best deal on the web, use that link down in the description of today's video. It'll take you over to Vitamin, a special page where you will get the best deal out there. And again, this deal is not going to be around forever, so use it or lose it. So next is a little bit different. This one is wearing too much cologne. So there's a saying that fragrance should be discovered, not announced. You don't want to be that guy that's in the elevator that it's choking everybody else out because you just have too much cologne on. Completely agree. Fragrance should be discovered not announced. Didn't I come up with that saying? No, I didn't. Uh, I stole it from somebody and it sounds like that she heard it as well and completely agrees. 
And she brings up a good example. When you are stuck in a room with people, you're stuck in a car, you're stuck in an elevator, you know, you don't want to be choking these people out. That being said, I wonder how Courtney would react if she was in an elevator with Michelle over at Curly Fragrance, because you guys know she loves to overspray. So you got Courtney saying, hey, you need to underspray. But again, Courtney's saying that applies to men. Maybe it doesn't apply to women. So while I do love cologne, I love when Teddy wears it. Um, I think it is a lot better when you can't smell them from a mile away. The only time I should smell you is if I'm very close to you or I'm giving you a hug. So same thing as I mentioned with the accessories. I think with cologne, less is more. Now, let me take a step back because I'm not going to fully agree on this. I do think there are a lot of fragrances out there that project well. So, you're going to get two to three feet and I don't think you need to hold back. For me, it's just don't overdo it. And there's a fine line between wearing a nice fragrance and having a couple feet of projection that naturally happen with the fragrance and then just choking people out. And you have to understand what type of situations are you going to be in. So, if you know you're going to be taking a road trip with people, probably not the best time to actually be loading on the fragrance. But if you're going to be at an outside event, I think you can wear a bit more fragrance. Now, if you haven't picked up on it, one of the things I think that makes these videos so engaging with people is they are so subjective. And, you know, we all have opinions. And so, her 10 things that, you know, women hate on men can be very different. I think Raphael Schneider did a very similar video over at Gentleman's Gazette and he had different items. I think I've done very similar videos to this and I have a different list of items. In general, we seem to have a lot of items in common, but it really is just down to the person, down to the culture, down to their own background background and what they like and what they don't. Next, we have clothing that doesn't fit. So, maybe you lost a bunch of weight and the clothes that you used to wear don't fit you anymore. Invest in yourself and get yourself some new things that fit you perfectly. I've mentioned before in last videos that fit with certain things is super important like a suit or a t-shirt. Let me emphasize that. Fit, Courtney, is incredibly important. In fact, it's probably the number one thing I always put out there with that style pyramid, fit, function, fabric. You nail those three things, you are ahead of 90% of men out there. Now, she makes a really good point there about men that have lost weight, they stick with the clothing they have. It's going to cost a lot of money to buy the clothing and they're just used to these particular pieces. I think that fit always trumps style. You know, maybe something out there is really popular, but it doesn't work with your body type. I think knowing that and understanding that is the first step in really creating your own personal style and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. So, she said that fit trumps style, but I want to, I think what she means here is that fit trumps fashion. Because when she goes on to describe it, what's popular, that was, those are fashion trends. Style is something that's classic, it's more eternal, it's something, it's being able to take what you have, your body, your build, your profile, uh, your personality, and then crafting an image around it. For me, that's more style than fashion. The same as wearing something that is too big, wearing something that is too tight is just as bad. I'd say too tight is worse than too loose because you can be slightly too loose and get away with it. But if it's too tight, we all seem to zero in on, wow, those buttons are stretching right there. Or it looks like if he bends over, those pants are about to tear. Or, oh my gosh, you know, those are, those are definitely some skinny jeans on a big man. All right, next we have clothes that are worn out. I'm looking at all of you guys that have 50 holes in your underwear and you're still hanging on to them. Yeah, that one should be pretty obvious. If you've got holes in your underwear, you need to get new underwear. So, more than just holes, I think wearing something that has stains on it or that is just frayed too much. If you're wearing a pair of denim that once had like distressed holes and now they're just big holes with none of the distressing in them, I think it's time to maybe retire those too. Again, completely agree with this point. If it has stains, if it has holes that you have worn into it, then it is time to retire. One bit of advice I would give you, if you find something and you absolutely love it, you're wearing these jeans again and again, it's worth you to go back and to purchase in multiples. How many times have you had that happen? You have like a favorite shirt, a favorite pair of jeans and they get a tear, they get a rip, they get a really bad stain, something happens to them and you're just like, ah, and you go to buy that another pair and you can't find them. They're out of stock, they're out of season. So, guys, don't be afraid to buy a multiples. When you find something, it almost becomes a uniform piece, something that you default to, you wear again and again. 
All right, next we have running shoes with jeans. So I think for men, sometimes finding what shoe works with a pair of jeans can be tricky, especially based on the style of jean that you're wearing. But I think no matter what type of jean you're wearing, a running shoe is never a good choice. So if you're someone who wears running shoes with jeans, maybe swap out that running shoe for a sneaker like a Stan Smith or a Converse or something that is just your personal style. Now running shoes with jeans, that one I agree with and I, yeah, I don't like that combination. You may be saying, well, Antonio, you allow flip flops with jeans. So what's the difference between running shoes and jeans? Well, with running shoes, you're actually wearing a shoe, a shoe that's made to be worn when you're out running. In the Marine Corps, we call them go fasters. You wore go fasters with, you know, when you were going to go PT. And I think running shoes, you should wear them when you go run. But if you're not out running, then wear sneakers, wear boots, wear other types of leather casual shoes that are really going to up that style game. And we're talking shoes that you can wear in, you know, if it's a little bit wet outside, if it's a little bit cool. So this is going to be your three seasons. If you're in a tropical environment, yeah, then you can wear the, uh, the flip flops with the jeans. All right, next we have deep V-neck. So unless you are wanting to look like a cast member of the Jersey Shore, I think you should try to avoid the deep V. I think a regular V-neck is totally okay. A crew neck is great. So first up, a regular V-neck is not totally okay. It is friggin' awesome. A regular V-neck, in my opinion, is one of the most underused pieces of clothing in a man's wardrobe. So many guys, they go right to crew necks and crew necks look great, especially if you've got a good body, that t-shirt fits you well. But you go for that V-neck, it's a, just a little bit more accentuation right there on the chest area. And I think for a younger man, for a guy in his 40s, 50s, that spends time in the gym, takes care of his body, a V-neck t-shirt is one of the best items you could add to your wardrobe. Just really try to avoid that deep V. I think a lot of times it just shows too much cleavage. Now the deep V that she's showing here, this is an undershirt. And that's where I see a lot of people wearing a deep V. And for an undershirt, by the way, a deep V is perfectly fine because you're gonna be wearing a shirt over. And the reason for the deep V on the undershirt is whenever you unbutton a couple buttons here, you're not gonna show your undershirt. Hence the purpose of the deep V your chest hair, which as women, I don't necessarily think that we want to see. I don't know if all the ladies are going to agree with her there. I think that some of the women out there, they like a little bit of chest hair. If you're a woman watching this channel and you like a little bit of chest hair, please let me know down in the comments. I want to hear from you. Awesome. Yeah, we got to stop it. I have no idea where she got this photo or if these guys actually thought this was a good look, but uh, wow, that's quite the, that's quite the image. I can't unsee this. Last on my list, we have cargo shorts or cargo pants. So unless you are hiking a mountain and you have a granola bar in every pocket, I think you should opt for something besides the cargo pants. So I've beaten up on cargo shorts before and I think the examples that she shows are pretty bad examples. I mean, the pockets are huge all over the place. Disgusting! And for day-to-day -day wear, probably not necessary, but I do think that there are some stylish cargo pants out there and even some cargo shorts. As a dad that has taken his kids to Disneyland, I put those cargo pockets to good use. So if you're going to functionally use those and hey, it just works with your lifestyle, I have no issue with it. And I agree for the most part, keep it clean. For your chinos, for your shorts, I think the vast majority of the time, a cleaner pair without any pockets is going to look better. All right, Jen, so what video to watch next? How about my unfiltered opinion on Alpha M? I react to his videos right here. Check it out. I'll link to it as well down in the description.